So without further ado, let's just kind of set up the agenda over the next hour of what we're going to talk about and really give you an idea of where we're going to go with this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is balayage versus ombre and even better yet, dip dyed hair and how they differ and how to define them. How to market balayage, the pricing as well as the time standard, consultation, tool selection, then the meat of the program is the application, and then of course troubleshooting any challenges and things, common things that we see happening in the salon and how to overcome them, and then of course a review at the very end. So without further ado, let's just jump right into our information. If you've attended any of the Bricado hair color information, you're going to have seen this before, so just sit back for a second. One of the things that I really like to drive home with hair colorists as they're coloring hair, regardless of whether you're doing balayage or whether you're doing a cap highlight, is you really want to take into heart the information that's presented with natural hair color characteristics. So natural hair color or believable hair color would be darker and cooler at the scalp, lighter and brighter and warmer on the ends, lighter around the face, primarily because the hair is more exposed as well as the texture of the hair is finer. As therefore, the hair on the tips will be a little bit lighter, and the hair at the occipital or at the nape area would be darker. And then the last rule is low light should dominate. And one of the reasons we drive this home with our color customers over and over and over again is because regardless of what kind of color you do, if you plug this into your brain, this is something that the customer cannot mimic themselves at home with an over-the-counter color. This is really, at the end of the day, what our guests are paying us to do is create a believable result on their hair, regardless of whether it's a single process color or whether it's balayage or ombre. And clearly, balayage and ombre are exaggerated versions of natural hair color characteristics. So let's move into defining exactly what balayage is. Balayage is a French word that means to sweep. It refers to the action of how the actual lightener is placed on the hair. And we use a tool to hand paint a very thick mixture of lightener onto a section of hair using that sweeping motion. And we get a little thinner at the scalp and brighter at the ends. The one thing I like to drive home, as you can see with the model here in the picture, is 75% or two-thirds of the strand is lightened. These variations can range from high contrast to subtle lightening. So it's very important when you're taking a look at an image, because guests are confusing ombre and balayage with, with each other, and they're distant cousins, but there is a clear difference between the two of them. Two-thirds of the strand, or the bulk of the hair strand, would be lightened in balayage, versus ombre. Ombre is a great example. Here's a great example. I love to use Mila Kunis, because she has a phenomenal ombre done on her hair. Ombre is a French word that means having colors or tones or shades that gradate into each other. So there's, there's a gradation from dark into light. And we get this inspiration from fabric. Approximately 25% or one third of the strand is lightened and the bottom third of the strand is lightened. And these variations can go from high contrast to really subtle in lightning. So when you're taking a look at the images that your clients are bringing to you, really double check, is this balayage or is it ombre because it's going to vary how you actually apply it to the hair. And dip dyed hair is really an extension of exaggerated ombre where we're actually putting bright colors on the mid lengths and ends and creating a bold color statement. So with that being said, how do I market balayage to my current customers that are out there? Well one of the first things that I really like to tell people when you're talking about balayage is really make sure that you understand this is not a replacement for foiling. Foiling and, and weaves in your current menu need to stay exactly where they're at. This really is an addendum or an addition to what you currently have. So I always like to tell people, think about the forgotten brunette. So your default guest is the brunette client. Think about the brunette's hair highlighting journey and what it's been in the past. If a brunette decides to get highlights, she comes in, sits down in a chair, and we put foils into her hair. She gets a beautiful result. On the next visit, she comes in and gets some more foils. Now she's getting a strong line of demarcation because we're getting a blonde buildup in the hair. By about the third visit, she has such a strong line of demarcation that she's a blonde coming and a brunette going, and it's not a very beautiful look, and they get frustrated and color over their hair. And that's been the cycle of a brunette's highlight life for an extended period of time. 
where balayage is a little bit different. If you think about the purposes that a brunette wants to highlight her hair, the reason she wants to highlight her hair is to create light within the interior structure of the hair to make her haircut look like it has a broken up shape to it. So she's not doing it for the purposes of trying to create a blonde look like a foiled client is. So think about all of your brunette clients that shy away from highlights because of the strong line of demarcation and how this would benefit them. Obviously, this can be done on a blonde, a redhead, or a brunette, but really when you're deciding who you want to market to, default to the brunette client. The second is create an iPad por portfolio. I have found in the salon, as I'm sure you have, that clients no longer bring in hair magazines. They're really not necessary in our waiting area anymore. Having an iPad or some sort of an e-reader that you can pull images up from the internet on is very common these days. Our guests are bringing in their phones with Pinterest pictures and portfolios that they've created. So I'm going to suggest to you that you do the same on your iPad and create uh, some folders of the following and pull them off of the internet. The first folder that I would suggest that you create for your portfolio is foils. You're going to have a variety of blondes, redheads, and brunettes in here. You're going to have some that are the angel hair pasta, really subtle, soft, blended highlights. Some that are your traditional spaghetti foils, some that are a little bit more noticeable, probably what we do every single day. And then the fettuccine foils, the ones that are really high contrast, thick, bold pieces of highlights in the hair. And create a portfolio that demonstrates those. Nothing drives me crazier as a salon owner when a guest sits in the chair and they say, I want a nice blended look. And then they get the complete look done and then find out really what they wanted was a little bit more of a bold look like the spaghetti foil type look. So I encourage you just to have those communication pieces so that you can really be clear with your guests in the consultation on what she's looking for. The second set is your balayage. We just defined what balayage is. So as you're pulling images off of Google for this, look for blondes, redheads, and brunettes. Look for low contrast and high contrast. And again, the lightness should travel 75% of the strand or about uh, two-thirds of the way down the strand. And look for some really high contrast and low contrast in both those areas. The next one is clearly going to be ombre. Blondes, redheads, and brunettes, high contrast and low contrast. Again, the bottom third of the hair is really what you're looking for. The last one is hybrids. And again, blondes, redheads, and brunettes. Now there's a hybrid that's a combination of actually all three. And if you've seen it a lot in Victoria's Secret catalogs right now, where we're seeing a few foils put right around the face, where they're applied really nice and thin, and they're softened at the line of demarcation, the mid-range or the sides of the head has a balayage effect on it, and then the very back of the head has an ombre. So there's this elongated, elongated gradation that goes from front to back, and that would be a hybrid combination so that you can really communicate with your guests. Because what I'm finding is the guest comes in and they use our words against us. They come in and sit down and say, what is this balalalaj thing? And they really don't understand the word, but they've been told to ask. So having a communication piece like this is going to make a huge difference. To take it to the next level, what you can really do is coordinate your own photo shoot. There's tons of photographers out there. Facebook is a great medium in the digital age. Do a beautiful before shot. Do a beautiful after shot with some beautiful makeup. And now you have images that you can put onto the internet, you can put on Facebook, that really help market these and communicate these pieces and also go into your portfolio. Better yet is even use those pieces to create a hardbound book using those images. And tell a little bit of story with each one of those images. Betty's a stay-at-home mom and she wanted something low maintenance, so we gave her a hybrid. That's a combination of balayage, foiling, and ombre all put into one look. So it creates a really great communication piece that you can have in your salon that starts the conversation and gives you something to connect back to. Pricing. When we talk about pricing, we also have to address time standard. For the salon owners that are out there, once you learn this new technique, the biggest challenge is going to be, how do I book this on my books? And traditionally, what I have found is people just mark out two to three hours off of their books, and they find that it's applied so quickly that there's a lot of wasted time. So I'll give you a default time standard, and you're going to want to elongate this. So for a full head balayage, you're going to want to give yourself a 45-minute application time. So now when I say a full head balayage, I'm talking about hair that is below shoulder length, but about mid-back. 
So in a 45 minute application, you can get a full head of balayage on actually fairly quickly. So obviously, if this is a new service to you or a new technique, give yourself a little bit more time until you get a little bit more comfortable. Your processing time is going to be about 30 to 45 minutes. Depends upon how you choose to process, and we're going to talk about that during application. And then, of course, your 30 to 45 minute haircut or finish time afterwards. That would be your full head balayage application, and I would assume during that 30 to 45 minute processing time that you're taking another haircut to maximize your profitability. In a partial head balayage, we're going to allocate 30 minutes for that application time, 30 to 45 minutes for that processing, and 30 to 45 minutes for that haircut or finish as well to maximize profitability in the salon. Again, taking a haircut during that processing time. My all-time favorite and maximum profitability comes from my quick light balayage. In a quick light balayage, you're going to do your great coverage because the bulk of what we do in the salon, at least 70% of what we do in the salon, involves great coverage. The second service is great coverage with highlights. So let's make that a really quick and easy service. We call that a quick light balayage in a salon. You apply your regrowth color just like you traditionally would. Once you apply your regrowth color, I want you to turn your brush vertically and just kind of pull some of that color through just lightly through the ends and dry, till, to the ends where it's dry a little bit. Right over the surface of the hair, while the color's processing, you're going to apply cream lights over the top of it, just to the surface of the hair, right around the face, nothing below the parietal ridge of the hair. Should take you no longer than a 30 minute application time for all of that. 30 minute processing because we're going to let that regrowth apply and process accordingly and the highlights apply and process accordingly. And then 30 to 45 minutes for that haircut or finish time at the very end. This is by far the most profitable service in the salon because if you look at those time standards, that's really what we're typically allocating for a retouch time in the salon. So I would encourage you as you move forward with these techniques, Implement them first in a quick light balayage application. As you become more flexible with it, you can move into a full head balayage application. So that kind of gives us an idea of pricing and time standards. Then, then that takes us into the consultation. At Bercato, we practice something called LSCPAR, and these are the series of steps. They happen very quickly in the salon, and I just want to visit them very quickly. If you've ever been through anything Bercato, you've probably seen this before. We talk about this all the time, and it really is kind of a fail-safe that prevents us from making some very large mistakes. So I'll glaze through the steps really quickly and discuss how marketing works into this in, in the consultation. The first step is L, stands for listen. Really practicing active listening, and it's going to be vitally important where balayage is concerned because of the fact that there's really a lot of room for error or miscommunication here. So when you do active listening, make sure you're not taping the client before you do the consultation, sit down in front of her, don't look through the mirror, and really have an eye-to-eye -eye conversation with her about what's going on and what needs to happen. Ask a phenomenal open-ended question that gets the conversation going, such as, if your hair could say anything about you, what would you like it to say? And really listen actively to what she has to say and refrain from giving a solution, reflect on what she says, and rephrase it right back to her. The second is share. Share is vitally important. Here's where you have an opinion, and this is the first point of contact for recommending retail. I always like to tell clients, tell future hairdressers, especially if you're new to the industry, develop a casual way of implementing your opinion to the guests. Be gentle about it, be kind, but let her know what your thoughts are. And it sounds a little bit like this. Mrs. Gottschalks, have you ever given any thought to putting a few balayage highlights in your base color right around the frame of your face, it would really draw the attention to your eye. She's only going to say one of two things. She's either going to say yes, and you have more dollar on your ticket, or she's going to say no. It's very simple. But what happens is if you continue to make a habit of sharing over and over, eventually the guest comes to you and says, what do you think? And that's the golden ticket is when, what do you think? This is also where you recommend retail. Before you even start the service, you really need to make a retail recommendation. Mrs. Gottschalks, I see your hair is very dry. I'm going to send you home with Saturate Shampoo and Treatment with your hair, as well as Versafix Spray Gel just to protect the hair with the alcohol free. Make the recommendation right there at the very beginning, otherwise you'll lose. 
communicate and clarify. This is probably the most important step where it relates back to balayage. You want to make sure that you discuss maintenance, and this is where you use your iPad and all those portfolios we just talked about. Because a lot of times when we talk about balayage, there's two misconceptions. The biggest misconception is how close the highlights are going to be to the scalp. You want to go through what believable hair color should look like and share those results with them so that they really understand there's going to be some natural shadow going on at the scalp here. And that is going to give them less maintenance over a period of time. And that's going to give them a little bit more of a believable look. If they're looking for less maintenance and less expensive, but they still want a foil result, you need to go back and clarify what the results are going to be. And that's really where the iPad comes into place. I can't stress it enough. I, we get phone calls all the time about how far away from the scalp it, it looks because it's intended to be that way. So make sure and clarify that that's the finished result. Permission. P stands for permission. Is there any other information that I need to know before moving forward? This is vitally important. You need to ask permission to move on. If your guest is rambling and she keeps talking and talking and coming back to the point, you have not gotten permission to move on. You need to make her feel good about this experience, and she needs to have everything communicated, clarified before you move forward. And permission is vitally important. It's amazing to me how we can get this far into the consultation and the client will look at us and say, well, yeah, I was bleached blonde. I went back to my natural hair color, colored over it at home, and now I want to go back to being blonde. Well, Houston, we have a problem. So make sure and go back and share what's going to happen to her hair, how it's going to fall off, and do all of those steps before you move forward. I'm surprised at how many hairdressers skip this step because they're in such a hurry to move forward and they get themselves into trouble without communicating clarifying information. A stands for action. Just do it. Have fun. Apply your balayage. Enjoy your time. Talk to the guests. Connect. Make sure that you're not over-talking. Connect back to them. Make sure that you talk about product while you're doing it. Step in and out of the consultation. So Mrs. Gottschalk, we've talked about saturate shampoo. I'm using saturate shampoo. This is how much I'm using. Here's how I'm applying it. See how your hair feels good. We call this at our salon the red. R-E-D, recommend, educate, demonstrate. There's three points that you do it. One is in the share, the second is in the action, and then the last is at the very end. Have fun, enjoy, and apply your balayage. The last R stands for record, rebook, retail, and referral. Write it down, write down what you did, how long it processed, what your systems were, what demi you put over the top, Ask to rebook your guests. I always like to communicate and clarify in the very beginning. If you discuss it in the beginning, Mrs. Gottschalk's, your maintenance on this is going to be about eight weeks. Eight weeks is May 15th. Does morning or afternoon work well for you? If you have that conversation in the beginning, you're not having it as an afterthought at the end. And I would suggest to you that when you walk your guests up to the front desk, the last thing you need to say to them is, I'd love to see you back in eight weeks. Eight weeks is May 15th. The first thing your receptionist needs to say is, that's May 15th, does morning or afternoon work, and pick up where you left off before she does anything else. Because if you purchase through the service and you purchase through the retail and everything else and you haven't asked for the rebook, they're already out the door in their mind. So rebook the business before you do anything else. Of course, this is where you recap everything that you used in your retail and you impart upon them any of your referral program. Vitally, vitally, vitally important that you follow LSCPAR when you're doing your consultation. All right, that takes us into a conversation about our tool selection when we're actually doing the actual application of balayage. It's all a nice big build up to our tool selection. And one of the things that I really enjoy about working with Bricado is the man behind the brand. Sam Bricado really has thought this through really well because first and foremost, being a salon owner and being a hairdresser behind the chair, he sees the frustration and he lives the frustration that we do as hair colorists. In the past, if you've experienced any other versions of balayage, you've seen high volumes of developers, 60 to 120 volume developer, where we were relying on the developer to do the lift for us. We'd use a lot of cotton, we'd use a lot of cellophane, which is an added expense to the salon owner as well to segregate that hair, 
or sometimes even using foils on top of the hair. Or we were manipulating powder bleach with cornstarch in order to make the right consistency. So we were taking the tools that we had and adjusting them to the technique that we were going to be using. Well, Sam, being the brilliant man that he is, created the tool to fit the technique. And it really has been so successful and it takes our balayage business and makes what's a good service into a phenomenal service. So this phenomenal tool is Cream Lights. Cream Lights by Bricotta. And Cream Lights has a unique consistency to it. It's specifically designed for freehand lightning techniques such as this. Balayage is square straight on the head. It's extra thick. The consistency is so thick, I liken it to Crisco. It is so thick in consistency where it's going to stay. It does not run or imprint on the surrounding hair, which you're going to see in our demonstration here in just a moment. And it contains essential oils that protect the hair. Because this is an oil-based product, it is shampoo-soluble, not water-soluble. So when you go to rinse this out of the hair, if you're going to be toning, you need to shampoo it out of the hair and then tone over the top of it. Now I will tell you, for those of you that are chem heads out there, the basis of this product is actually um, uh, ammo is not ammonium persulfate, it's potassium persulfate, which lifts a little bit softer and less raw than a traditional powder bleach does. So you will probably find that you're toning less and less and less when you use cream lights in the hair. Um, we want to mix this with two parts of rich cream developer on the hair. And again, shampoo it from the hair once the processing is complete. And it's designed to lift up to five levels in the hair. So it's not your power bleach that you would use to lift up to um, six levels out of the hair or seven levels. This is really designed to lift up to five levels. When you're talking about a balayage guest, that's really what you're talking about is up to about five levels of lift. Now, our second lightener is powder lights. And powder lights is your all-purpose lightener. This too can be used for on or off the scalp application. So your foil application, um, your full head bleaches, this is beautiful for. You can use this for balayage. It has essential oils in it as well. And it has a blue base to control warmth. Again, mixes in a two to one ratio and has to be shampooed out of the hair. You can use this for balayage techniques. This is designed to lift up to seven levels of lift. What I have found works really well in the salon is if I'm working on with a guest where I need high contrast in the hair, instead of actually using just the powder bleach, I'll mix up my cream bleach and apply my powder lights over the top of it or mix it in with my cream bleach to give it a little bit more punch to get me up to those seven levels. So I get the consistency, the lack of imprint, and all the success that comes with cream lights, but I get the power behind the powder lights to lift through that hair works beautifully in the hair shop. So there's a place for both of those. Now here's a visual kind of, of some of the pieces that you're going to need. Obviously the first piece that you're going to need is your cream lights and your rich cream developer. It's vitally important that you use the rich cream developer with it because it's the only thing that will mix with the oil with cream lights. And trust me, as a cheap salon owner, you have to use the rich cream developer. I like to use a ceramic bowl because I'm not chasing the product around on my tray. I just found these beautiful ceramic bowls really inexpensively at Big Lots. Of course, four clips, a nice damp towel, a small bowl of water, and a sponge mm -hmm. brush. This sponge brush is, you just want to dampen it a little teeny tiny bit, in, and you're going to use that to apply and keep a bowl nearby. I've taken a clipper comb here and covered it with foil to use as a spatula. You can certainly use anything that you want. You can buy a spatula, but why use more tools? Of course, your thermal bricado comb with the strap tail, and that's your setup. It's very simple and straightforward. Um, those ceramic bowls, just for everybody's knowledge, I found those at Big Lots. They're really inexpensive. They're called a bento bowl. They come in large, medium, and small, and they're really inexpensive, but they're heavy and thick so that when I'm applying color, one, it gives a better presentation, but two, the slanted side to the bowl and the square gives me an opportunity to drag the color out of the bowl without having to actually wipe it out of the bowl, and um, they fit better onto a square tray, just a hair color of smoke. Now, in the mixing ratio, you're going to want to mix this two parts of rich cream developer, and please measure 
please make sure and measure. You're going to do two parts rich cream developer, one part of your cream whites. I'm going to scale this out. You can use grams or ounces, whatever works for you. You can see the consistency of, of the cream whites as it comes out. And I think here we mixed about 30 grams of cream lights and 60 grams of rich cream developer for a total of 90 grams. We started with 30 volume in this situation. If I'm working on a level 6 or lighter, I would traditionally start out with 20 volume and move to 30 volume. If I'm working on a level 6 or darker, I would start out with 30 volume and move up to 40 volume depending upon the level of lift that I'm looking for. And again, if I need to punch it for lift, you're going to punch it with a little bit of powder light built, built into the product, no more than 25% of your total product. So you can see I'm just using a whisk to mix it up instead of a color brush so I don't waste, and being the cheap salon owner that I am, and you can see how it thickens up really, really well. The biggest key trick here is going to be what I do in a, in a moment once I'm done mixing. You want to pack your product down to the side of the bowl. So give it a couple smacks, and you can see it creates a slope of product on the side. And it's vitally important so that you're not actually wiping the product off using a brush. You're pressing it into, into the product. Okay. Now let's jump right into the actual application of the product itself. Here you can see our model before. She has a level five, possibly a level six on the mid length and ends. Pretty quality long hair. The bulk of the clients that we see in the salon. There's a couple key areas that you need to be very well aware of when you're charting this out. The first is the apex or the highest point of the head. So you can see where I'm laying that comb on the head without hair comb lifts off, that's your apex. This is that one piece of hair that lives absolutely everywhere. If I put one highlight or foil there, I can highlight a whole head. The second is the vertex. The vertex is the strongest break point in the head. This is where the hair is going to naturally part out and break, and we're going to see that break point in the head. The key thing to know here is anywhere that the head curves, the hair is going to break open and show you that highlight. So let's create light on the curves of the head. So we really want to make sure we understand the skull shape. So the three things that affect a beautiful balayage are the skull, the fabric, and the gravity. So what is the head shape telling you to do? And are you paying attention to where the curves are? What is gravity telling you to do? Where is it living at? And how we're going to work against that? And better yet, what is the fabric telling it to do? Is it curly and does it expand away from the head? Does it shrink a lot? Or is it very cottony and light? and we have to beef it up a little, a little bit. So pay very close attention to it. And again, anywhere the head curves, the hair breaks. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by dissecting the head from the apex to just behind the ear. And here you can see I'm just putting my finger right at the high point or the junction of the ear. There's a divot in a human skull there. And just draping that hair right into my hand and gently blousing it up. And you can see where that hair breaks. And that is a vertical bone that travels up the side of the head that connects with the apex that tells me that hair moves forward and that hair moves back. So it helps me dissect what is the actual side of her head. So we're coloring the hair where it's going to live. Break it from the apex to just the high point of the ear. We probably do this a lot in hair cutting. The second part is, on the top, we're going to want to do a diagonal part line. Even though she might wear a straighter part than that, from marker point two, which is about the corner of the recision or the corner of the eyebrow, you're going to want to come across and connect with the apex of the head and create that diagonal. The diagonal is what gives you softness. So as we highlight up to that part line, even though she's going to straighten out that part line a little bit in the finished result, it gives us softness so we're not parting right at our application point. So we've broken the hair from the apex to just behind the ear and a diagonal part line from marker point two to the apex. In the back of the head, you're going to see that we break it into two pieces throughout the back of the head. 
just from the apex to the back dead center in the middle of the head. And then we have our front sections with our diagonal part lines and knee fighting with the mannequin. We have our light side and our heavy side. We're going to start our application. I love it. If we can grab our clients by the nose, that'd be great. We're going to start our application at marker point three or the corner of the hairline. And we're going to take about two finger widths at a diagonal from that point and just carve that out. We want to start applying in the front of the head because this is going to be processing once we apply the back of the head. It'll all process together in one fell swoop. So we're going to take that hair, give it a good thorough comb through, and you want to make sure when you color this that you're not coloring it straight down in its fall. You want to pull it into its natural growth, which is a slight diagonal forward because as that hair falls back, it's getting softness. So by applying at the diagonal and moving the hair at the diagonal, you're going to get a soft flow to this whole head. So here we have our piece again. We're going to start with our first application, taking the sponge brush that's been dampened, and we're going to press lightly into the lightener and create a small buildup. And you can see I'm not wiping. There's a nice flat application. There's no buildup of product on it. It's smooth all the way across. And that's what that slope gives me, is the ability to just press into the cream lights lightly. Very important that you apply it appropriately because wherever you touch first is where the most amount is going to go. So the first thing we're going to do is in holding that piece of hair, two finger width diagonal section, marker point three, corner of the hairline, pulling it into its natural growth pattern, not its natural fall pattern, which should be slightly forward. The first thing we want to look for is the shine line. So visualize a light over your shoulder and you can visualize where the light is going to hit that hair. And that's the point that we want to focus this on before we do anything else. So you can see as we move that hair back and forth, my pinky points out exactly where the shine line would be on that section of hair given its placement. Now make sure that this hair is at your chest level. It's vitally important. We're going to take our product where we touch first is where the most amount goes. Hold it horizontally and put your pinky up so you don't put weight onto the brush itself. Because you really want to make sure that you're frosting the surface, you're not pressing through. The second that I actually apply it in a classic manner, you're going to start to get a lot of pressure and application and imprinting. So I'm going to hit the shine line. It's coming at a small rotation of the wrist. It's very difficult to catch on camera. You'll see it again here in a second. And we're going to stroke down two to three times. And we're just hitting the surface of the hair. Two to three times. Seals in all that extra hair. You want to make sure that you're not see, seeing the actual hair. It's such a thick application. And pick up a more product appropriately. You want to see such thick application that you can't actually see the hair through it. Two, three, and that's the sweeping motion. Nice and long. Don't shorten your strokes. And there's a slight rotation of the wrist as it comes and interacts with the hair. So it's not a horizontal application. It's a slight application. Now what's going to happen, as we seal all those hairs down, we're working from the shine line to mid lengths and ends. We're going to use the 45 of the sponge, and we're going to take the excess product and begin to slightly push it back and lift off. Slight back, slight back, slight back, slight back, slight back. Just soften it and wait a Slight back, you can see it soften that piece. Not a lot of pressure being applied, meaning the very tip Chippy's tip, now we're going to pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down, soften. Very similar to smudging the makeup application. You really want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And you can see where I've messed up on the hair a little bit. Just wipe it off with your fingers. As long as bleach is dry, it's not active, so you're not going to have a problem. Just wipe it off with the hair. It's no longer active. Now as we come down and just perfect our application here and smooth everything down, Again, 45 that hair up from the shine line using the 45 of the sponge, vitally, vitally important. That gives me that softness up, 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 up. Turn around and use the, the pointed side down, 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 down. Start to soften it. It's very important that you push that product up using the 45 of that sponge brush. 
as we come to the very end, I'm just going to secure the hair holding it. And then I'm just using the spatula for support to make sure that I elongate that application all the way down to the ends of the hair. Nice and thick. There's nothing on the back side of that hair. Lots of beautiful negative space that gives me contrast to that hair. And I'm just going to let it lay just like that. Now, once we move on to our next section, we're going to continue in that diagonal positioning, two finger widths up, pull that section down, and secure everything else out of the way. So I like to point out when I lay that down, I want to see that mid length and end poking its way through that hair. I don't want to see the top third of that section that's been applied underneath. If I can see that, if I can't see that top, that mid length and ends, I'm going to take some hair up. If I can see it, I'm going to take some hair down. So you, you're going to have to adjust accordingly because where the top side of that diagonal is naturally organically becomes the curve of the head. Now to prove that this doesn't imprint on previous hair, I can take that section and marry the two of those pieces together. So this is always the most amazing part. And you lift it and you can see there's no imprint of previous color on top of that hair. So where you put the product is truly where the product is going to stay. So we'll do one more application. We're going to continue that same process, moving away from its natural fall direction into its natural growth direction, which is slightly angled forward. We'll load our sponge brush the same way we did before. Look for the shine line. You can see the shine line right there. We're going to focus on the shine line on out. There's a small rotation to the wrist that happens right there. Very subtle that makes a huge difference to the application and gives you the softness versus starting very horizontal. So I'm going to make a mistake and apply a strong hard line of demarcation. If that happens to you, use that little bit of water that's sitting near you, drown your finger, and you're going to just soften that line of demarcation if you get any weighted or heavy spots in the hair and give it a blurry line. If you still feel it's heavy, use the tail of your palm, like a spot that's heavy, and just stab through, and it'll pull product off and then wipe it off on your damp towel that's nearby. And you can just do that all the way through anywhere that you feel the gradation is not as heavy as it, or is too heavy, and it needs to be softened up. So we'll continue that application, just like we did before. Again, small rotation of the wrist, seal the product down, two or three application flows. Using the 45 of the brush, I'm going to push the product back, load the brush a little bit more. I'm going to push the product back towards the regrowth. I'm holding it nice and tight at that point. Push, 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 soften, push, soften. If you're going to hit the hair above, it's okay. Just pull it off, pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down. Soften, 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 soften. Now, again, pull it off. As long as it's dry, it's not active. It's not doing what it needs to do. If you're worried about facial framing, this is really where you want to come in and frame the face of the, of, of the um, strand. You would complete this all the way through to the bottom. Again, just using the spatula for support. I'm not applying anything to the back side of that section. Just using it for support. You can use a gloved hand for this because you're applying so little pressure and you're using your hand like a spatula in the same place. So you'll be able to tell if your pressure's off or not. If you're worried about facial framing around the face and getting highlights that really connect to the front of the face, remember that that section is a three-dimensional piece. So once you apply to the surface, while it's still in your hand, you can take the same brush and just apply to that turn your brush horizontally, and there you go. That's the, the facial framing right around the side, and follow the same exact process that you would follow through everything else. All right, we've continued up the back of the head, and we're moving at that diagonal, and that diagonal naturally organically becomes a little bit more horizontal and a little bit softer as we move up, and it's going to become parallel to that part line that was already existing there. So we're moving up in two finger widths above next. But you can see this section looks a little bit large to handle in one hand. You can if you want, but if it's a little bit too much, break it into two. 
And if you have a forehead where you're worried about that little ombre eyebrow lightning bit, you can save a little bit of foil and then slide it right underneath your brow. So break that into two and follow the similar process. So here we've applied both sides of our section. We've continued the same process on the other side, working at the diagonal, working right up into that diagonal on the heavy side, doing the same thing on her light side, where we're working at the diagonal, working up to her part line. Now what will happen is you'll organically get this kind of small triangle that will be left on the top of the head. Easy, easy. Just grab that piece, and what you're going to do is pinch it so that you have two flat surfaces on either side. And pull it away from the head a little bit and apply the insane exact application that you would apply before. Make sure and soften at the regrowth. That high point centerpiece is going to be at the turn in the head and right below the apex. So you're going to get lots of highlight on both sides of, of that piece. Now again, if you're worried about that hair touching the eyebrow and lightening the eyebrow or getting into her face for whatever reason, you can take a small piece of foil and I just slide it in there and it pops right over the top of it and keeps it right off of her eyebrow. So now we're going to move into the back of the head. In the back of the head, you have two quadrants. If you are right-handed, you're going to start in the left quadrant, so you're working into yourself instead of across yourself. If you're left-handed, you're going to start in the exact opposite right quadrant. You're going to start at marker point four, excuse me, five. Take a diagonal that's two finger widths, pull that down, and secure the hair out of the way. And continue up the back of the head in those two finger width sections. So here you can see we've worked up the back of the head following that same exact piece, two finger width sections, applying in each section, and we got all the way up to the apex of the head. And here we're actually going to, we've applied, 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 stop once we hit the vertex of the head, and secure that hair out of the way. We're going to treat that a little bit differently. This is where your shark clips work really well, so you end up dragging the flat. So we're going to repeat that process on the opposite side of the head. Okay, here you can see we've applied at that diagonal on the right-hand quadrant of the head, moving up the back of the head, and you can see the, the lightness already developing throughout the front of the head while it's processing all together. What I like to do is, as I move to the back, is remix a little bit of fresh cream lights or have it already sitting in the bowl ready to be whisked up with a slightly higher volume of developer, sometimes five volume or possibly 10 volume higher from where you currently started at so that it all processes together. And here you can see we've worked all the way up until we hit that vertex of the head and we're gonna marry those two sections together. So here we have together, we have the apex, the vertex, and the two corner turns in the head. It all connects together. So we're going to take two finger widths from the bottom of that new section, pull it down, and we're going to just apply just like we've done everything else beforehand. So again, you can see how it's coming off the curve of the head, holding it in that pattern. Look for the shine line, and we're going to apply accordingly. Now, you're left with this small triangular section. What you're going to do is actually, once that triangle section is applied, break this into two sections. It's going to be slightly smaller than the rest of the pieces that you've had. Secure that above hair away. Now, on this section, when we apply, we're going to apply high on the sides and not much in the center. So we want a little bit of a V shape, because if you visualize where the hair right on the corners is, that's going to fall just behind her ear and give me that highlight that I'm looking for on the hair. That section above is going to have hair color in the center but nothing on the sides, giving me that appropriate negative space for the highlights to show up. So 
So here you can see we've applied high on the sides and lower in the center, leaving some negative space right over the top of that vertex and lots of highlight on the mid lengths and ends to just secure that piece and finish off the end. Now this is the most important piece of everything. We're going to have that last section right on the top of the head, which encompasses the apex. And this is where you really want to pay close attention. Make sure you can see that part line. Make sure it's not a beyond your scope of vision. It must be directly in your carriage. And as we come off of the curve of the head, because the apex is that one piece that travels everywhere, we're going to apply high in the center, but low on the side. So an inverted V. See, we begin to apply, working from our shine, just below our shine line, in a nice sweeping pattern, all the way up to the center, and drag it back down, all the way up to the center. Now begin to gradate that on the side so that it drops down low. So what's going to happen as that apex falls, your mid lengths and ends still have highlight, but you have some of that negative space right at the scalp or subsection that gives you the dimension that you're looking for. Soften it with the 45 and then the tip. Continue on both sides. Make sure that that hair is nice and, and encapsulated with cream lights so that you get phenomenal lift out of it. Dragging down to the ends. And again, using a spatula U and I'm catching both sides of those ends so that we get a nice amount of highlight on the curve. You can use a spatula or your gloved hand, your choice. And we're going to lightly frost over the surface. I can't stress enough how light the touch is here. It's very light all the way down. Not a lot of pressure because I don't want to push the product through the hair. So again, High in the center, low on the sides, lots of negative space, so when that hair falls, it gets bolder towards the ends, but still has a believable look towards the scalp. Here you can see we have our full head application applied. I'm just going to take a small traditional garbage bag, and I'm going to cut it lengthwise down the long side of the garbage bag. Extra set of hands always helps in this situation because it's very difficult to process this. As long as bleach is moist, it's accurate. And I'm going to take my water bottle, have a little bit of saturation built into the water, spray the inside of the bag, and we're going to lightly drape that over the top of her hair. Don't really press, just lightly attach it and apply a heat source over the top if you want. Or if you're a purist, you can just air process this accordingly. But what will happen is if you apply a heat application over the top of it, clearly it will speed up your application from where you're currently at. It will also create humidity with that water that's on the inside of the product, keeping your bleach moist longer. So you're going to have a beautiful lift in about 30 to 45 minutes. So we first processed her until she was just past the gold stage, moving into the yellow stage. And then we rinsed, shampooed, and then we toned her with a combination of 9 stroke 8 and 7 stroke 1 throughout the whole head in our demi line. So you can see kind of the finished result once everything's processed. Let's give her a quick twist. Real soft highlights, very subtle, very fluid, traveling throughout the hair. Mannequins are our friend. They are not fighting me. You can see my process in the back how it falls accordingly. As we move that hair around, you can see a lack of exposure of warmth with the scalp. I think that's the most important part is that we move that hair around and you really get an opportunity to see what it looks like when it falls. Great mid-lengths, great ends, finished result. Of course, an incredible blow dry happens. We just finished her out with 8X. If you guys haven't tried 8X in Super Soak, it's pretty dang amazing. We just shampooed her with Pure Indulgence Super Soak shampoo and put in the leave in Super Soak treatment and then 8X right over the top of it and blow dried the hair. So the shine that you see is really just that type of a look. 
so it gives it an incredible, incredible finish. I really like to zoom in on the scalp application so you can see how spotty it's really not in the finished result. I know people get really scared of having a, a spotty result. So you know you can. All right. So that really gives you an overview of the balayage technique. I just wanted to go through a few troubleshooting things, the most commonly asked questions that I get. The first one is processing. We talked about heat processing. If you have lights in your salon, it's a beautiful tool to have lights because you can kind of direct where you want it to go. A roller ball is really good. Um, I think in our salon we have every tool underneath the planet. You can use moist heat from a steamer if you want to. I find that if I put the head of the steamer up and just focus it on the back of the hair, it works really well. Um, you can also use a climazone, but a traditional dry heat over the top of that damp bag does work well as well. You can use heat. Use heat as a tool, but not as a rule. Make sure and be conscionable about it. It's always better to process it, air process it. And again, the cream lights doesn't lift quite as raw as anything else. Vary your volumes of developers. A lot of times I'll start out with 20, move up to 30 if I'm working six or lighter. I'll start with 30 and move up to 40 if I'm working six and darker. You can begin to add powder lights to your formula as well if you need to punch up the lift a little bit more. Double caping. So because this is messy, it's inherently messy and a towel gets in your way, especially around the nape line, you don't want any buckling to the hair whatsoever. So your client has to be really aware of the chair because especially if they're sitting there processing and they have a high back chair and your cape's over the top of it, they lean forward to get something and they inherently lean back they're going to imprint that hair and create a mess for you. So make sure they're aware and that somebody helps them, you know, if they have to use the restroom, they need to do it now. So what I like to do to prevent this is I put one cape on them traditionally and I take a second cape and put it on them backwards like a Batman cape over the top of it. And that's the one that I drape over the chair. So when we do the application, I'm dragging onto that cape. So when I go to rinse, I just unbuckle that cape and unsnap it and I can lift it off and drag that hair right into the shampoo bowl and the dirty clothes hamper goes the other cape and I have a new fresh cape underneath of them and we're good to go from that point forward. So processing gets a little bit easier. Toning formulas with this, of course I love Bricado Color Project Gemi for all of this. My favorite go-to toners are 10 8, 9 8, and 7 1 and 8-0. Those are my four go-to toners. If you see the model in the image here, she's a Latina model. She's a natural level five. We use 30 volume cream lights on her and we balayage her whole head. And I took finger width sections and I toned her using nine stroke eight, which is a level nine blue violet base. And then the second color that we did was eight stroke zero with seven stroke one, half and half. So that you get that variety of caramels that blend with her dark base rather than just being light hair inside of dark hair. And we just took finger width sections and kind of did a quick tone, processed it at the shampoo bowl for 20 minutes, did a quick glaze, rinsed, shampooed, conditioned, and you can see the finished result. So seven stroke one is my go-to if I see a lot of orange developing in the hair and I have to control it. Nine stroke eight for those strong gold tones and 10 stroke eight for that lovely pale pastel icy type of blonde. Retouching this gets really easy because the client goes so far in between. She's probably not going to need this to be retouched for anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks because there's such a soft line of demarcation. So you're going to, if you follow the same pattern that I was showing you over and over and over again, you're going to notice that you're picking up the same sections and you can virtually see your balayage. Just come back to the shine line and apply appropriately. Soften it back towards the regrowth. And as you come up to where the new shine line has moved down, you're just going to gently feather off and you're not going to apply the mid lengths and ends. So I mentioned that ombre and balayage are distant cousins of each other. It's really the same application when you're doing ombre. When you're doing ombre, all you're going to do is apply that mid range color. So you have your natural regrowth color, you have a mid range color, and then you have your lightener for the ends. So let's say she's a natural level five. If we want our mid-range color to be a level 7, we would apply a level 7. I personally would like a 6 stroke 2, excuse me, a 7 stroke 2 with 30 volume for that. Use permanent color. Put in a little bit of your Bricado color thickener into your color 
and it'll thicken up beautifully for you into a gelatinous substance that you can balayage right from the shine line all the way down to the ends and then apply your cream lights right over the top of it for your mid lengths and ends and soften them all together and it really creates for a beautiful ombre and the one thing that I do encourage you to understand is that ombre is still a surface application just like balayage it's not a penetrated application because a lot of times I see hairdressers taking sections applying all the color dark to the scalp applying a mid-range color all the way through on the ends and applying a lightened color all the way through to the ends and that really creates a beautiful color melt result that's more similar to dip dyeing than it is to ombre. In ombre, there's some gradation to the color and there's some negative space that's left. So they're distant cousins of each other, but it becomes a very simple application. Working over the top of previously colored hair, one of the things that I highly encourage you to do is just do a sh shifting application beforehand. If you have a heavy color buildup on the mid lengths and ends of the hair, you can adjust your developer accordingly so when you're um, working that you're working with a 20 volume on the shine line to the mid lengths and ends and as you're working up to the ends you, when you apply you apply a second a second application that's a 30 volume over the ends a lot of times if you're really feeling pressed it's 12 o'clock my computer's telling me that it's 12 o'clock on the nose and my time is done uh, if you're feeling really pressed you can apply powder lights over the top of it all right that's my presentation if you have any questions Now's the time to ask. It's all yours, Gary. Thank you. I really appreciate the time. I hope you walk away with something for this. Thanks, Jesse. That was really, really great. I know we've gotten a lot of people asking questions, and uh, you've typed in questions, and we've been done our best to answer them along the way. If you have any other questions for Jesse, please go to the questions tab on your control panel and type them in. We'll stay online and answer those questions for as long as you have questions to ask. So feel, please feel free to ask. We look forward to um, working with you and helping you answer your questions about ombre, about, ombre, about balayage, and about bricado color. Um, for those of you that will be leaving us, thanks for your time. We appreciate the time you spent with us. We'll be sending out a link to the webinar once it's uploaded to YouTube. We also have um, a worksheet that can go with this that will help you understand the sectioning and how everything works together. So thanks for everybody. Please